Hello everyone. So in today's film, I'm going to be talking to you about my most highly recommended MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadows. I very much remain a fond fan of MAC Cosmetics and many of their products, but certainly their powder eyeshadow formulations. I have been using their eyeshadows for so many years within my work, as well as been very favorable of them as a consumer. And I was inspired to create this film today as a viewer had requested that I create a film sharing my most recommended MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadows. I wouldn't say that MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadows give immediate color payoff. It's not the sort of thing that you can swatch and then you get immediate color. I'd very much say that the MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadows are more designed to be built up. So I would say in that event that they are more user friendly for the professional or for the amateur. I think that you can definitely utilize their products and build them up gradually. And that's definitely how you ensure a very seamless eyeshadow application is by building up in layers and creating a gradient. So with that said, I think for anybody that perhaps is going to try a MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadow or were to take some of the recommendations for which that I'm going to make within today's film and utilize some of the MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadows, you will find that to be so, that they definitely require being built up. I find them relatively easy to work with. I would say that most of the MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadows do have a slightly more drier formula. I certainly wouldn't say that they are creamy. I would say that they're more on the dry side of things. And they do tend to work exceptionally exceptionally over an eye base or an eye primer or a paint pot. However, I tend to just use MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadows on bare eyelids regardless. As having used them primarily for so long, I do have a strong understanding of them. Now, for many of my regular viewers, you will be used to seeing a lot of MAC Cosmetics products within my films. I am very favorable of MAC, of course. And besides, MAC is not that far off of being McLean. So I'm very fond of them. And I have been purchasing MAC Cosmetics products ever since I began my career as a makeup artist. Certainly as a person, as a makeup artist, professionally, whatever the category, I do tend to try to utilize things as best as possible. So I do try to make the most of things, whether it is an event, it's a day, or an eyeshadow. I like to make the most of something or something that I'm working on or working with. So many of the eyeshadows for which that I'm going to share with you can be used for more than one thing. You can use them on the eyes, for eyebrows, for contour, for a lot of things. I suppose you could even line your lips with some of these colors. So I definitely do try to utilize products in such a way that you can use them for more than one thing. I just find that easier. I find it more practical. I also don't like having to have 20 of everything. The smaller the kit is, the more condensed it is. I do tend to find that to be more agile and more usable. And of course, it's a lot more economic. I also made this point within my full face of affordable makeup tutorial film for which that I produced and shared here on the platform www.youtube.com not all that long ago that you don't necessarily have to have a full face of high-end products or a full face of less expensive products. You can sometimes actually go for a product that is quite expensive, but you can use it for more than one thing. Now, personally, I don't tend to find MAC Cosmetics eyeshadows that expensive. Of course, if you are a professional, you do get access to a professional discount. And I also buy the eyeshadows in their pan format and just put them into palettes. And when I say pan, what I mean is it is the eyeshadow pan with the product inside. It doesn't have the packaging to go with. So for those of you that don't necessarily know what pan is, this is what the pan is. And certainly when people refer to the pan or the eyeshadow pan. They're not talking about a kitchen pan, they're talking about the eyeshadow pan. And this color is MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Omega. All of the eyeshadows today for which that I'm going to show you are by MAC Cosmetics. And I have the same shade Omega here in my hand, but this has its packaging. And as you can see, it's a very fond shade of mine. I go through a lot of this. I hit pan quite a lot, but definitely in my own makeup bag, I do tend to purchase the eyeshadow with its packaging so that I only need a few of these tones. And certainly today I wanted to keep my makeup quite fresh and quite soft and natural looking as London is very hot at the moment. And I have a full day of meetings and engagements after this. So I wish to look most 
presentable. Of course, MAC also retails eyeshadows in quads and in greater quantities, so you can purchase a palette with many eyeshadows in it. Now, when it comes to the palettes, I do tend to buy the double palettes. And what I mean by that is when you open them up, you can see on both sides that there are all these insets. And the double palettes are great. I think you get more bang for your buck. And I also think that you're able to store more product in these. Now, altogether, there are 30 eyeshadows within this palette. And there are two 15 pan eyeshadow insets. So the insets come separately from the palette. And if I just stick my little spatula in, you will be able to see that this is what the inset looks like. Now, all of the MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadows, of course, are magnetized. So there is a magnet on the back of them and the inserts have a magnet on them as well. So when it goes in, it just slots into place and you can hold it upside down and they would fall out. Of course, if you slam it down on a table, then yes, it will fall out. And of course, the inset just slots nicely into the eyeshadow palette. Now, this palette is quite scruffy. I've had this for many years. This is also from my working kit. You can see in certain areas, the plastic is a little scuffed. Now, these palettes come with a plastic insert, which is great because you can protect products on one side. You can also have a different insert with cream products in it. And then, of course, on the other side, you have your powder formulas. So the two don't mix together. You can also put the names of the product on the little insert. I, of course, give this a good thorough clean before I showed it to you here today with some surgical spirit and a little cotton pad. As I never really like to show off products that have lots of makeup all over them or looking scruffy in any capacity, but all these little scuff marks are just wear and tear. And that, of course, happens with any working kit. Now, I have divided this palette into two sections. On this side, it's all of my neutral tones, my browns, my most useful tones. Then on the other side, I have a lot more colorful tones, some silvers, some greens, some plums, some oranges, some golds, all of that, and certainly more metallic tones, some more satin tones and some matte tones. Even though there are 30 eyeshadows here, I am probably only going to mention roughly around 15. Certainly the eyeshadows that I use periodically and find to be the most useful within my work, the ones I constantly reach for, and probably would say that I would always like to have nearby. Now, even though there are 30 eyeshadows here, I'm probably only going to mention around 15 or 16 of them, only the ones I use continuously within my work and certainly on myself. Now, of course, you can remove these from the palette by just pressing down on the actual eyeshadow, and that will take the pan out of the inside, or, you can remove the insert. And with the insert removed, you just turn it around and you will gain access to the back. And as you can see, if I just push my finger in the back, you can see it raises the eyeshadow up for removal. So the first eyeshadow that I'm going to mention is an eyeshadow that I use all the time. I don't know how many of these I have gone through, but it's really useful, certainly on my own skin tone. I find it very useful on most skin tones. It might get a little bit too light once you get to the darker skin tones. But even if your skin is super dark, you could actually wear this as a cream eyeshadow on the eyelids. And the first shade for which that I'm going to mention is MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Brulee. Brulee is a marvelous tone. I would say it's certainly more of an orangey ivory. It's not one of these super yellowy ivories. Even when applied to my skin tone, it is only a fraction darker. So I'm able to map out the eyeshadow and use it as a transition color. It can also be used as a muting color. So if you have gone in and applied too much eyeshadow and then you think, oh goodness, the shape is too big or it's a little scruffy in the blending or it's a little patchy. By going in with a lighter shade, you can sometimes almost erase what you've applied and correct it. So Brulee is a mark this color for that. And evidently, of course, you can see that I use quite a lot of it as I have hit the pan. I've gone all the way down to the bottom. Now, the next MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadow for which that I'm going to mention, which I'm sure is not a surprise to any of you, is, of course, Omega. Omega is a marvelous color and I would thoroughly recommend it to anybody. I, of course, have hit pan. It's very fondly used. I go through Omega a lot. And I really like the versatility of this shade and this product. I have used it as eyeshadow today through my socket. I used it as a stencil for my eyebrows and I also used it as my contour. So Omega is a marvelous color for many, many purposes and I would thoroughly recommend it to anybody. The next powder eyeshadow for which that I am going to speak of is MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Patina. Now, this I would describe it almost as being a cousin of Omega. It's very, very similar, but it has a satin formulation. And what that means is that it has a little bit of sparkle in it, a little bit of metallic, but it's not quite a metallic. It's just a little bit softer than a matte tone and not so sparkly or shimmery as a 
proper metallic. What I use this tone for a lot actually is on the underneath. If I have used a lot of heavy eyeshadow on the top or if I want to create the kind of look where I have really dolly looking eyes and very often you don't apply anything to the underneath. If I want my eyes to look really uplifted and quite doll like I would use this eyeshadow on the underneath because if you apply a full eyeshadow look with eyelashes and liner and have absolutely nothing on the underneath it can look a little bit stark but if you go in with a matte tone of course it defeats the effect that you're going for so by using a satin tone it can give you the definition without it being too heavy or too severe and because it is a satin formula it just has a slight twinkle of light to it so it is a little bit brightening certainly more so than a matte eyeshadow the next eyeshadow for which that I'm going to mention is the MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadow in the shade concrete I would describe this in the same sort of family as a maker it's a little cooler and certainly considerably darker but not that far off in terms of tone I absolutely love this color it's marvelous I certainly use it on eyebrows I also use it within eye looks I use it for many many different things like Omega it can actually work as a contour certainly on the very palest of skin tones like my own use it very very sparingly and very soft if you're going to use it as a contour on the cheeks it looks fantastic through the eye sockets it's also great for softly lining the eyes and I would say from light to medium just ever so slightly towards dark you could get away with this being a contour as well but it is marvelous through the eyebrows the next two colors for which that I'm going to mention are not that far off concrete the lower color here is MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadow in the shade Brun and the top color is MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadow in the shade Espresso I'm sure for my regular viewers you will have seen Espresso quite a lot within my work and the reason that I've shown these together is because they are quite similar in terms of depth but their undertone is quite far off. Espresso is very warm so it's marvellous on every skin tone. I certainly use this to line my eyes because of its warmth it contrasts with my blue eyes marvellously so. I could get away with using this on my eyebrows. It can look a little bit too warm on my eyebrows. I prefer to go for the brun for drawing in individual hairs or adding definition but both these as eyeshadows are marvellous. I love espresso on the eyes. It just warms up an eye look and it's one of these colours that I would say is quite warm no matter what skin tone you have. Some colours when you apply them to the likes of my own skin tone they will look really really warm and almost reddish and orange some browns but then if you were to apply the same color to a really deep skin tone they can sometimes look quite ashy so I would say espresso overall is one of these colors that can look great on most skin tones I would definitely say try all of these colors always try before you buy but I certainly use both of these colors within my work on all skin tones from the very lightest to the very darkest and I think they're marvelous and certainly with a lot of the tones that I have mentioned so far a lot of them are quite relative to one another they're just lighter or darker versions of each other with a slight very faint tone difference so you can use them on top of each other so that you can create an eye look that can go from light to dark very very quickly and very very easily and of course most importantly very seamlessly. I'm also going to mention MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadows in the shade Swiss Chocolate which is the top one and Folly which is the lower one because these shades are absolutely marvelous and I use them all the time within my work. I'm actually quite surprised I haven't hit pan on these ones yet but these shades are very very warm they're quite reddish and quite brick like but they are beautiful on all skin tones. I use both of these colors within my work and of course on myself as they are fantastic but I use these colors often in conjunction with one another so I will go in and sculpt a socket with the Swiss chocolate and then with the folly I will intensify it and use that through the socket for greater intensity. These two colors in particular are great no matter what kind of eye color you have. They look flattering on brown eyes immensely gorgeous on blue eyes and on green eyes so they're marvelous they look great on almost everybody the next eyeshadow for which that I'm going to mention is MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadow in the shade soft brown this is a marvelous color I've said that a bit probably all of the eyeshadows for which that I've mentioned this is not that far off Swiss chocolate I would say it's actually almost like a half breed between Swiss chocolate and Omega it is certainly darker than Omega but much lighter than Swiss chocolate this color looks great on everyone you can also use it just to sculpt your socket it's very very warm it can look quite orangey on me of course it contrasts against my blue eyes enhancing them but this is a marvelous color on 
almost every skin tone. But this is a fantastic color just for sculpting through the socket and also using as a transition color. I use it in a similar way I use brulee, certainly on deeper skin tones. In the same fashion, I would use brulee. If brulee is too light, I will go in with soft brown. It's great as a base, it's great as a transition color, and it's marvelous. I could probably get away with using it as blush if I wanted, so it's a fantastic colour. I wouldn't necessarily use this as a contour because it's so warm and quite orangey. The next MAC Cosmetics powder eyeshadows for which that I'm going to mention are the shades Hox, the lighter one on the top, and the lower one is slightly darker and it's the shade Blackberry. Now if I show you Swiss Chocolate and Folly again, you can actually see that they are quite similar. The difference is that the Swiss Chocolate and the Folly are more warm toned, whereas with Hawks and Blackberry, they're more plum toned. Although I would say that Folly could be used with Hawks and Blackberry quite easily, but the Swiss chocolate is a little bit too warm. It may clash with these. Hawks is an absolutely beautiful color. I would describe it as being a dulled pink or a dusty pink or quite a pale berryish tone. As you can see, it's quite similar to Omega, but certainly more on the plumish berry side. And I actually do tend to use these in conjunction with one another. And of course they seem quite soft, but if you build them up on the eye, you can get quite an intense look with both of these, but I would certainly recommend both of these tones. I shall mention MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Carbon, and this is a black eyeshadow. I'm quite blasé when it comes to black eyeshadow. I think a black eyeshadow is a black eyeshadow. It, they all kind of do the same thing. Some are more intense than others. Of course, you have to. I would say though that with black eyeshadow, there are none of them that are immediately black. I think black eyeshadow, of course, you have to be quite careful with its application. of When you go in with black at all, it can't be something that's easily corrected. So black eyeshadow has always been something that I apply gradually and build it up slowly. I wouldn't really say that there is a best black eyeshadow. Of course, if they're easily blendable, that's a bonus. But I really like carbon. I've been using it for years within my kit and I use it to line the eyes, to intensify the socket. You can use this as a contour believe it or not, very, very sparingly, certainly on skin tone as light as my own, you can use it very, very faintly. I would say this is a fetching black. I know sometimes it gets confused as being a dashing black or a seamless black or an outdoor black, but it's more of a fetching black. And I think often people are quite confused as what black to go for, as there are so many shades of black. Even I forget the amount of shades of black that there are, but I would definitely say that carbon is a fantastic black, and I use this within my kit a lot. MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Red Brick is a color I would highly recommend because it's a bright orange. And I know some people find bright orange or bright yellow quite scary, but orange I think is an absolutely essential color in your kit. I think you can use it to warm up eye looks. You can use it to neutralize colors. If you've gone in with tones that are a little bit too ashy and you're thinking, no, I need this to be warmer, you can almost go over them with an orange, just changing the hue. I'd recommend that to anybody that has a deeper skin tone as well. If colors look a little bit too ashy, go over them with an orange and it will just lift the ashiness away. I could probably get away with using this as a blush very faintly applied. Most people I think could get away with using this as a blush, very faintly applied. I use this as an eyeshadow all the time, as a transition color to line the eyes, to brighten the eyes. Orange, of course, contrasts the most against blue eyes. So it looks absolutely beautiful on my own eyes, but I would definitely recommend to anyone, whether you are a professional or a consumer, or just maybe somebody that's starting out, try an orange out. It can be so useful and handy just to have a tone like this, just to brighten up looks. The next eyeshadow for which that I'm going to mention is MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Sketch, which is quite an odd color. I would describe it as being this sort of brownish, plumish, browny, plumish color. It is quite a berry plum tone, but it is very, very useful. I remember a lot of people used to rave about this color and I could never understand why they would be going on and on about Sketch. But then when I actually purchased it and used it, it's a quite an unusual color and an unusual formula. It's a slightly satin tone. It has a very faint plumish purple metallic through it. Very, very faint. But it is a really useful color, I would say, on almost every skin tone. On my kind of skin tone, you could use it to sculpt the eyes. It will look quite intense, or you could play it down quite soft. It looks great against green eyes, blue eyes, brown eyes. I would say it's definitely a true plum color. It's not quite warm. It's not quite cool. 
It's just in the middle, so it's a fantastic color. Now, the next two colors for which that I'm going to mention are metallics, and I haven't mentioned that many metallic shades, as I don't tend to purchase metallic tones from MAC Cosmetics, unless, of course, it's in a loose pigment formula. I do tend to prefer to work with metallics when they are loose, as I do tend to find that the formula is more refined when they're loose. When they are pressed, as gorgeous as they might be, they can sometimes be a little bit clumpy or thick. But the first shade that I'm going to mention is MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Cranberry. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous color. And it's this pinky plum color with a slight hint of bronze in it. So it looks absolutely beautiful on the eyes. I would say this color works on absolutely every skin tone. It's absolutely beautiful. It just makes eyes bedazzling and gorgeous. It looks great against every skin tone. It looks great against every eye color. One of the ways that I like to work with this color is applying it as a sheen across the eyelid. It can be great for just adding this gorgeous reflective hue across the eyelid. And I normally just apply it to the center of the eye and then just buff the edges so that it creates this center point of intensity. It looks great on everyone. The next color voucher that I'm going to mention is MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Amber Lights. Now I wouldn't say this is a true yellow gold. It's a slightly more bronzy gold. It's not quite a bronze and it's not quite half bronze, half gold. I'd say it's a quarter bronze, but it's this absolutely beautiful, gorgeous, warm gold shade. I use this on myself a lot. I use it within my work. I also think it's really useful to keep a metallic gold shade with you, as well as a metallic plum, like I just showed you with Cranberry, as they can be fantastic for either saving a look or making a look. This tone looks great on all eye colors and all skin tones. In fact, on the very deepest and darkest of skin tones, it could even be used as a highlighter. Certainly, personally, I wear this on my eyes, and within my work, I of course would use it in the same fashion that I would use the cranberry, where I apply it to the center of the lid and buff it slightly, and slightly buff it through the socket, just to ensure seamlessness. But it is an absolutely gorgeous color. And if I hold it against my actual eye, you can see just how much it contrasts with the blue. So it's an absolutely beautiful tone. The last color for which that I'm going to mention is MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Pink Freeze. This is an absolutely gorgeous shimmery pink tone. It has a slight reflex of blue in it, just ever so slightly. I use this to highlight my inner corners, also as brow highlight, but what I use this most for is for highlighter on the cheekbone. Certainly on the very first of skin tones, it looks absolutely gorgeous as a cheek highlighter. So that more or less summarizes this film featuring my most used, highly recommended MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow Formulations. All these shades are eyeshadows for which that I use within my work quite frequently, and of course, personally. Many of you, I'm sure, who are regular viewers of mine are probably quite familiar with many of these shades as it is, as I do tend to use them over and over and over again, as they are very useful and very diverse. You can do many things with all of the colors that I shared with you. I hope that you'll find today's film to be either interesting, useful, helpful, or beneficial. And I shall indeed warn you that some of my uploads over the coming weeks might be slightly intermittent, as I shall be going on holiday. But once again, thank you so much for watching, and of course, take care. Bye!